sulfate, one sulfate, two potassiums, two potassiums, that would be balanced. Question with that. Now this next one is not in the notes, but try it anyway. So you're asking yourself if these are compatible. That's what you use the list for. Is sodium going to form an insoluble material with bromide? No. Is iron going to form an insoluble material with hydroxide? Yes. Look at your last rule. Compounds containing hydroxide. Now see, this is water insoluble. When you go from table 4.2 to table 4.3, it switches on you with perspective. Compounds containing the hydroxide ion are generally not water soluble. There's a few that are. The exceptions that are soluble are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and barium. Those are the few metal hydroxides that are soluble. And iron's not one of them. And so the iron will form a solid. So we know there's going to be a reaction, and so now we get into forming out the compounds. What's the charge of iron in this particular instance? Three. And if the iron's a plus three, and it's bonded to hydroxide, which is minus one, then electrically that has to be which we already decided is a solid. And for the other compound, it's sodium, which is a plus one, with bromide as a negative one. That's just NaBr. And we already decided that, that was going to be aqueous, correct? From the chart. That's everything but the balancing. Any question on getting those products predicted out? Yes. This three here? We'll take care of that when we balance. But for the reason we took it off right now 
is that the iron being a plus three is going to be bound to three of those. So that's an internal thing. It's a one to three ratio. But when you start to bond that with sodium, then the sodium can only bond to one. Okay? And so that's why we only show one over there. But that's as good a place as any to start balancing. If there's three bromines here, we'd have to put a three here, correct? And then that would also give us three sodiums, so we put a three here, and then that gives us three hydroxides, which is good, because we already got the three hydroxides in the iron three hydroxide compound, correct? Question back there. Question about double displacement reactions. All right. We've got eight reaction types that we're going to cover. We just did five of them. So these three will be next time, next class. All right. Now, before you pack up, how many of you are going to end up taking Chem 2? All right. For those of you that are taking Chem 2, then these are these next three are the most important ones. All right. We're going to spend one day, maybe two, on these. All right. In Chem 2, you'll spend a month and a half on them, doing various things with them and pH calculations and things of that sort. All right. So if you know, if you know you're going to be taking Chem 2, then these three are going to be the most important three for you. All right, know that now. Between now and next class, work on the five we've done. Don't bother looking ahead. Work on the five we've done and get good at them by Monday. All right.